I did see both, um, egg laying factory farms and dairy factory farms. And um, they're, I mean, probably worse. Uh, they're very, very bad. If animal welfare is your thing, then eggs are the thing to think about and to, to get rid of. It's interesting because beef gets a, a really bad rap in this country. Like whenever we talk about meat, people imagine a cow. But um, of all the kinds of farmed animals, they have it the best. I mean, it's not to say that much, but you would much, 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 much rather be a cow than any other kind of farmed animal. And um, on top of which, it takes something like 220 chickens to make the amount of meat of one cow. So again, if animal welfare is your thing, then you have to think, in a sense, that species is 220 times as important. Are you vegetarian or vegan? So am I vegetarian or vegan? Uh, I'm certainly closer to vegan, and uh, the only thing that sort of keeps me from being that is, um, I mean, I wouldn't buy eggs or dairy in a store, um, and, I, and I, I probably eat some things that occasionally have them in them. Um, I came to that argument much later. It actually wasn't something I was even totally aware of until I was well into this book. I think that um, it is the total extension of the argument. I mean, it is the right thing to do. Um, it is also a lot harder. You know, I don't have, you know, in this world, anywhere in America now, it's not that hard to be a vegetarian. I would even say you're not missing anything. But being a vegan takes more thought. You really have to devote more of, more of your time to shopping and to cooking, and that's great. We should probably do that anyway, but it's a, it is a reality of that. No, no, I, I have absolutely no doubt that it's healthy. I mean, I've talked to enough nutritionists to know that it is. Um, so, I mean, one thing about having a diet that's more difficult is that it inspires you to think about cooking more and to cook a more diverse group of foods and to spend more time doing it. And those are great things. I mean, they're great both because you're going to have a better diet and they're great because people should be spending more time thinking about food and eating together and cooking and I mean, so much of factory farming is the result of casual eating and quick eating, eating that happens in an automobile instead of at a table. She's very cute, by the way. <laughs> the difference between um, free range and cage free. So, um, free range and cage free are the fastest growing sectors of the whole food system. And this says something so great, I think, about Americans, because they don't taste any better, and they're not any better for us. Um, people want it because it's the right thing to want, because we recognize it's just, it's just not right you know, to have animals in a cage where each one has about this amount of space for, you know, the, from birth until death, not for like five bad minutes in the dentist's office. Um, and um, so we want more, and we're willing to pay for more. Clearly we are. And so the industry recognizes this and, and manipulates us. So free range for, um, you mean for chicken, right, for chicken, um, is self-regulated. Nobody regulates it. So we, it relies on um, uh, supplier testimonials. So let's just say I were a factory farmer. And let's just say I had 100 chickens in this podium right now that you can't see, which is fitting because you won't see the chickens that you eat. Um, I could call them free range, and I could sell them, I could call the meat free range, I could call the eggs free range, and um, sell it to you for more. And you'd be giving more of your money because you're pursuing your best instincts, not because it's better for you, not because it tastes better. Um, and that's frustrating, at least. In terms of cage-free, it, it means exactly and precisely what it sounds like, and nothing more. So a cage-free egg is, is a cage-free um, chicken um, by the way, all chicken we eat meat is cage-free. Th those kinds of chickens aren't raised in cages, only egg-laying hens. And um, to say that they're cage-free is to say that they're not in cages. Now, often they will have more or less the same amount of space as they would have had in a cage. They will be in a you know, windowless shed with 30,000 of their compatriots, um, 
And this is not what we imagine. I mean, the real problem with farming is that we have a mental image of what it is. And then there's the reality of what it is. And there's this great distance between our mental images and, and the realities. And we have no clear line of sight between the two. It's impossible to know if what we're envisioning is right or wrong because we can't go to these farms even if we want to, and most of us couldn't anyway because we're busy people. We just don't have the time to go to all of our food providers. On top of which, if you ever see an image on a package of meat or eggs, it's gonna show you a bucolic farm that corresponds to your mental image and has nothing to do with the source of that food. So we have to either correct our mental images or correct the reality. If we correct our mental images, people are gonna stop buying it because they don't wanna to contribute to that. They don't wanna cast their vote for that. They don't wanna adjust that. Um, if we, if we you know, start to correct the reality, we're gonna have a very, very different food system, which by necessity will mean that people will have to eat differently, much, much less meat, because we can't raise the amounts of meat that we're now eating humanely. We can't give them the amount of space that they need. Um, it is, there isn't enough earth. Is there ever been a backlash to the book, or to you, or do you expect one from the industry? Has there been a backlash? This has been one of the most surprising things to me, is that there hasn't <laughs> been. First of all, the book has been reviewed now maybe a hundred times. There are people who think I'm an asshole. There are people who think, what, you are nodding. I just know that. I just saw you nodding when I said that. No, behind you, her. You, yeah. I was like, there are people who think I'm an asshole. She's like, anyway, there are people who think I'm an asshole. There are people who think the style of the book is annoying or whatever. There's not been a single critique of the argument. There's not been a single defense of the industry. And I guess I was expecting it, even though I couldn't think of it myself. Um, I was on Larry King a couple weeks ago about this, and before I went on, it was kind of the first time I'd had to face a meat industry person, and I was really nervous, and I prepared and looked at everything I knew, and I thought, what's the silver bullet? What's the argument I haven't thought of? And there was nothing. The person offered nothing. I mean, the best that they can possibly say is we're feeding the world, which we can get into in a minute why that's such complete bullshit, but there isn't, there isn't a, a counter-argument. So that's been very gratifying. In terms of the industry response, there have been... You know, sure, like industry periodical things um, uh, responding to it. I haven't been sued. That was something I was somewhat worried about. Um, but they don't want to sue me because, A, if they sue me, it will highlight the issue. B, if we actually go to court, then I would be allowed to say, well, then you really do have, in the interest of, like, disclosing all evidence, you have to let me go to all these farms. And they, that's the last thing in the world they want. So... Will anything happen? Probably. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no experience with this, but I've been I've been surprised thus far um, that it's been it's been a very a very smooth ride. Okay. Two more questions. I think this person. Yeah. Um, have you been to a meat producing farm that is what you'd like to see as a model for you know, farming in general? Ah, have I been to a meat producing farm that would be a good model? It just depends what you mean by model. I've been to farms, let me say this, where farmers treat their animals better than I treat my dog. I mean, they give them as much space as they could possibly want, feed them. There's just no way you could honestly deny that they have good lives. I mean, really as good a life as this animal could possibly have, except that it meets this that unfortunate end. <laughs> now, at some of these farms, they go to great, great lengths to make sure that that end is as good as it could possibly be. So, do I believe there are farms in which animals live beautiful lives, are completely unaware of their impending deaths, and don't experience them at all? I do.